Ik mis Bembo. Bembo. I'm fairly sure that should read 3rd of April. Let me check that. Now that is right. Now, Bembo is special. She's got a special place in history. Because other than HMS Furious, she's carried the largest guns ever fitted to a Royal Navy battleship. Yep. Yeah. And... She's built in 1885. Shameless book plug. So these are the second biggest guns ever to serve the Royal Navy. Now, when I say second biggest guns, they are 16 and a quarter inch Mark I naval guns. They are fitted to Bembo. And then for Victoria and Sans Peral, they're of course fitted in a single a twin in a single twin mounted in a single turret forward. But Bembo has them first, so Bembo gets the credit. They built twelve of these guns. Their barrel length was 40 foot 8 inches which means they were 30 cal guns 16 and a quarter inch guns 30 cal they could carry a range of pretty darn interesting ammunition but let's be honest the more important thing on it was it was colossal They were built by Ellswick's Ordnance Company. Again, there is a, a company you have to watch in Royal Navy history. They have a tendency of producing very interesting things when the Royal Navy want them. And again, they're the one I'm highly suspicious of when it comes to the 18-inch gun project, and highly suspicious of a few other things going on. They'd supplied similar guns to the Regia Marina, which had been fitted to the Andrea Doria in 1885. And the Royal Navy required parity for its Mediterranean fleet. Isn't that great? <laughs> so what Ellswick does is they sell the guns to the Italians, and then they know they're going to be able to sell them to the Royal Navy, because the Royal Navy is going to require we have the same capability of guns as our Italian counterparts. <laughs> Oh, I can't, I'm, I'm sure there's no armaments company which does the same thing today. Can you think of any armaments company in the world, in modern history, which supplies potential opponents with massively capable systems and then has to sell equivalents to their own nation because their own nation can't afford to be outmatched? Can't think of anyone who would do that. Now, I will say before anyone sort of jumps in on this, um, I always find it surprising when people find it strange that companies which specialise in certain things make profits when those things are in ascendancy. I.e. when there's a war going on, the arms companies make a profit because they're the ones who specialise in selling arms, but they don't make a profit in peacetime. And there's usually more peace than there is war. But there's usually something going on, but, you know... It's more the amount of wars which require the really high tech equipment are rare. Tree, where it the where there is possibly some vitality to that whole conspiracy theory. In that, and I say this with a lot from a loving place, some of the stuff done by those companies is seriously egging it on. Seriously. And, um, yeah. The 16 and a quarter inch gun is a good example of this. 16 and a half inch gun. That would have been... Yeah, the, the British actually would have preferred a bigger gun than the Italians got. And Ellswick basically went, eh, then you have to pay for its development. 
and so the British went, let's take the 16 and quarter. We're not that big of mugs. We know what you've done. Also interesting, of course, is that on the Sans Parel, they're fitted in a sort of turret. Whereas on the Bimba, they are fitted in barbettes. Huge barbettes, but they're, you know, they're still barbettes, they're still open. In fact, let's be honest, the Bembo is a very interesting design of a ship. And I, I would always say, including in the Admiral class, is more about the Royal Navy, um, broadly speaking, trying to pretend they're all a class than an actually being a class. Because... Okay. So, most of the rest of the class have either 13.5 inch or smaller guns. Other main guns. Usually they have 13 and a half inch. And because the uh, because the other rest of the class had twin 13 and a half inch guns and the 16 and a half uh, 16 quarter inch weighed less, they were able to increase their numbers. Uh, and Bembo has more six inch guns and the broadside battery. And remember what I said, the pr real killing weapon in battleships isn't these big guns. They're the status symbol. They're the, look how big! They're basically the equivalent of the... Um, this is, please, you know, uh, anyone who's easily offended, skip about 30 seconds now. They're the equivalent of the guy in the changing rooms who never wears a frigging towel, okay? Just walks around everything dangling out. The thing, you know, you don't want to see it. You're in the middle of getting dressed. You don't. No one wants to see that coming in at head level, walking past them as they sat down on a bench. But this is the equivalent of that. It's basically going, look how big mine is. But that's not the thing which does the damage. It doesn't. In a fight, what does the damage? The legs, the hand, and the arms. That's what usually does damage. Those are the six inch guns. And so having more of those actually makes her a far more powerful ship. She has ten six inch guns. Five each side. And five, 14 inch above water torpedo tubes. The Admiral class as a whole, as a standard, these lovely, lovely vessels, which are usually called ironclads, had in Collingwood, etc., had four had four 12-inch guns and six six-inch guns. In most of the other ships had four 13 and a half inch guns and six six-inch guns. So once you start thinking about the sheer level of power going on, and there is a, another excellent design, which I almost include in this, but I'm, I'm going to add it. You know, when you sort of include a sort of design like this, and you can see what its spacing is like below, you realise that these ships are... They wouldn't be under current circumstances included in the same class, unless it was sort of made very clear they were subclasses, and they were very different than each other. They have some similarities. If we consider the average Admiral class, and this is a this is a diagram of Bembo. The average Admiral class had a speed of 16 knots. Between 16.6 .6 and 17.5 knots under forced draft. Bembo, 15.7 knots normal, 17.5 knots forced draft. So Slightly slower than normal, maximum speed, but force draft does match in. It's a different ship. Ah, uh, the stats. Now, what I'll do is I'll, so I'll put that to the back a bit. Yeah, then I can leave it up there for the Bembo design. And that's another diagram of the 16 and a quarter inch gun, and it's, it's spacing in the barbette. Displacement, 10,600 tons. Length, roughly 100 meters, or 330 feet. Uh, beam, 68 foot, 6 inches. 
and that's 20.88 meters. Draft, 27 foot 10 inches or 8.48 meters. With a two shaft Morsley compound inverted engine, we're providing in normal 8,658 indicated horsepower. In forced draft, that's when you're forcing air down into there, 10,860 indicated horsepower. Indica indicated horsepower. Now, complement 523, as mentioned, two 16 and quarter inch guns, 10 6 inch guns, 12 6 pounders, and of course the 5 14 inch above water torpedo tubes. Ah, oh, it's lovely to have 5 torpedo tubes. Belt. Well, here is where it gets really interesting, and when you start to realize that the armor belts on some of the later Royal Navy battleships really aren't anything near where they could have been. 18 inches of armor. Between 457 and 203 millimeters. That's points 8 inches, others point is 18 inches. The bulkheads were 16 inches or 7 inches, depending on where they were on the ship. Yeah, 16-inch bulkheads. Barbettes, 11 and a half inches or to 10 inches. So the sides, the parts where they thought they could get hit, 11 and a half inches. Sides where they thought less likely to get hit, 10 inches. Conning tower, between 12 and 2 inches. Honestly, I'd have just made it 2-inch standard, but you know that's me. I'm, I'm cruel to the conning tower. And I can actually, you see, the thing is, in this period, the conning tower is actually viably important. I can understand using it because mostly it's get, you're getting quite close and if you're using six inch guns. Yeah, that's going to do most. So the conning tower will put some, offer you some protection. But it's once you get onto an all big gun arm and honestly the conning tower and me are just going, what's your value? And deck between three and two inches of armor. So let's be honest, this is a floating block of steel. Yes, that armor is... Not as effective as later armor is. But imagine if you built, I don't know, the Queen Elizabeth class. And you've gone, right then, we need to build a super battleship. When was the last time we built a super battleship? Bembo. How thick was her armor? 18 inches. <gasps> Let's build it with 18 inch armor. Imagine the joy of HMS Warspite of having 18 inches rather than 13 inches of armor. Imagine what she'd have got up to. Again, this is the point where the armor was bigger and thicker than the guns. Admittedly, how big you'd have had to make the Queen Elizabeths to get them up to the speed they wanted to go, and giving them 18 inches of armor would have been interesting, but still it's 18 inches of armor. She was built at Thames Ironworks Blackwell Shipyard. She was launched by Catherine Gladstone, who was, of course, the wife of William Gladstone, on the 15th of June, 1885, and completed in June, 1888. She would be broken up in 1909, and she is... It's one of the reasons why I find it funny when people go, Admiral Class, I'm not sure what names would come, and I'm going, really? You don't know what names will come out in an Admiral Class? Seriously, we, we had an Admiral Class before. The Admiral Class... Had got Collingwood, Anson, Camperdown, Howe, Rodney, and Bembo. And the moment the Royal Navy start going for admirals, there are names which will turn up. Howe will occasionally turn up, but Rodney always seems to turn up. Um, Anson likes to turn up. Duncan is a favourite. Hood is a favourite, but not been gone back to recently. Um, yeah. Nelson, of course. Always loved Nelson Collingwood. Notice they're all Age of Sail ones, which are safely far enough back in the past that most people aren't going to get politically involved in them. You can see on this one, I, I, what I love is you can see all the boilers lined out, etc., and the engines and how it's sort of it's propelling itself forward. You can also just see how ah, it looks. It's not as wide as some of the later ships, but this one really does look. 
it's designed, you can tell, not for long-range cruising, but for close-quarters brawling. It's a battleship. Really is. She's a good-looking ship. Sadly for her, she's commissioned in June 1888. She serves with Mediterranean Fleet until October 1891. Then she goes in reserve until 1894, when she takes part in some short commissions for manoeuvres. From 1894 until uh, April 1904, she served as a guard ship at Greenock. Mm. She took part in the fleet review held at Spithead in August 1902 for Edward VII's coronation. But she remained in reserve and was sold off in 1909. And what is really sad about her is it shows the pace of technology that this ship, when she's built, is absolutely over-the-top amazing. And then, very quickly, you have within... What can I say? She's... She's built, laid down in 1882. She's launched in 1885, completed 1888. The Royal Sovereign class. Those ones which I would say take us from ironclad to what are usually called pre-dreadnoughts, but I call the Royal Sovereign era battleship, uh, Royal Sovereign style battleships. They are laid down in 1889. Launched in 1891, 1892, and soon in service. And these vessels immediately go, hello. And you're dealing with a very different level of capability from those ships onwards. But they have those twin 13 and a half inch guns, which were the absolute dream gun. And it's one of the reasons why I'm so surprised when HMS Dreadnought is built with 12, 12, uh, 12 inch guns. Because... The 13.5-inch gun has been the dream gun of the Royal Navy for so long. Yes, some of their ships have gone back to 12-inch because they could build it longer and were building it longer, but, you know, it, the British usually liked something bigger than a 12-inch gun. They really did. You know, they jump up to the... Yes, there are reasons for them jumping up to the 13.5-inch guns. But the fact is, the British were very happy to jump up to 13 half inch gun because that's their gun! That's what their battleships had had for such a long time. But still, a good looking ship. A really good looking ship. And forgotten often in history. Because she doesn't get to take part in options, operations. And th this is a point we often forget when we're talking about warships. We talk about the ones which get to take part in big operations and are famous for that. We forget that a lot of them don't take part in operations and are still frigging useful. And critical to all the things we do. Because without them, you wouldn't get a lot of the peacetime stuff you want that you seek to do done. You just wouldn't. What have we got coming up? Well, nothing really announced yet. And, ooh, next week it's going to be justifying a navy to a continent. But this is supposed to be going out on the 3rd of March, so tomorrow it's navigation. Wish me luck. I hope that's a good one. Take care.